December. New toothed bird upends bird evolution, Genavis. The two major groups of modern birds, Neonithae and Paleonithae, can be told apart by their bony palates. Neonaths have palate bones that aren't fused together and jointed skulls, while paleonaths have stiff skulls with the pterygoid and palatine fused into one piece, which has long been thought to be the case for the first birds, the neornithes. But there aren't many fossils of palatal remains from taxa close to the origin of this group. This makes it hard to draw strong conclusions about how the ancestor of the neornithine palate looked. A team from Cambridge University published their findings on a new toothed bird from the Cretaceous that helps provide a new notch in the understanding of bird evolution. They described a new type of toothed ornithurine with a pterygoid that looks a lot like those of the living water and landfowl groups. Janavis phenalidens, as they have named it, pretty much looked rather similar to the well-known Mesozoic Ornithurine ichthyornis, but Genevis is much bigger and has a much higher level of postcranial pneumaticity. This shows that the Ichthyornis group was still around in the latest Cretaceous. Genevis confirms that at least some Mesozoic non-crown Ornithurines had anatomically Neonathus palate bones. This suggests that crown birds may have pterygoids like those of living fowl. The results, along with new information about the palatine of ichthyornithines, change what people have thought for a long time about the ancestral crown bird palate. This forces a rethinking of the evolution of the defining traits of birds. Another semi-aquatic dinosaur found, Nato Venator. For aquatic animals to move quickly through the water, they have to make their bodies more streamlined. It is well known that diving birds have streamlined bodies, but this has never been seen in non-avian dinosaurs. The main reason is that, with a few exceptions, most of the known non-avian theropods lived on land. Even in the groups that are thought to be semi-aquatic, there is no clear evidence that their bodies are streamlined. A group of handsome researchers published their description of what they named Nato Venator polydontis in the journal Communications Biology. Nato Venator is a new theropod from the Upper Cretaceous of Mongolia with a well-preserved skeleton containing several mobile dorsal ribs arranged in a way similar to diving birds to make the body more efficient. Its wide-arched proximal rib shafts show that the rib cage is compressed from the back to the front like aquatic reptiles. Nato Venator's body shape suggests that it might have been able to swim and hunt. This type of body shape developed separately in different lines of theropod dinosaurs. It was a close relative to Hauschkaraptor, another goose-like dromaeosaur from the same area but different time. Both have been controversial as to how aquatic they really were, but that is a discussion for a full video. Miniature South American Notosaurid Shakes Up Armored Dino Evolution Patagopelta the evolution of the armored dinosaurs, Urankylosaurs and Stegosaurs, is well documented, but not well understood. That is thanks to their remains being few and far between. They had so much armor that it all fell off of the body when they died and got fossilized at random. A few new armored dinosaur discoveries over the last few years have called into question what we know about these angry pineapples. Those critters are ones you are no doubt familiar with thanks to my ramblings, Stegoros, Antarctopelta, Spicomelus, and Jacopil. These guys come from the southern hemisphere, where ankylosaurs are extremely rare and oddly small and weird. A brand new ankylosaur from the southern hemisphere that is technically not all that new is extremely weird due to the very fact that it is not that weird. A team of South American scientists published their paper on this new little armored guy in December, naming it Patagopelta cristata. They were able to figure out that the critter belongs to the Notosaurid family of ankylosaurs, making it a much more advanced or late evolving form of the dinosaurs than those weird offshoots that have been getting published in recent years. This says a lot about the evolution and migration of the armored dinosaurs, but more are needed from different continents and times to get a full picture of this radiation. A modern lizard in the Triassic? Mammals, birds, and squamates, or lizards, snakes, and relatives, are some of the most important living vertebrates. Understanding how they evolved is key to answering important questions in biodiversity science. 
We know a lot about where mammals and birds came from, but not much about where squamates came from. A groundbreaking study was just published by David Whiteside, Sophia Chambi Trowell, and Michael Benton on a small fossil reptile from the Triassic. This new reptile, which they named Cryptoverinoides microlaneus, lived in England 202 million years ago and preserved a partial skeleton, skull, and jaws. It has at least 15 traits that are unique to squamates, and it also has some traits in common with unidentatins and anguimorphs. The new find shows that the origin of modern snakes and lizards is much older than was previously thought, and the new dates show that modern type lizards and snakes changed a lot after the Carnian Pluvial episode, which happened 232 million years ago. Ritualistic Combat in Ankylosaurs Besides the armor, the most notable trait of the armored dinosaurs was their clubbed tails, though half of this family did not have clubs on their tails, but we will ignore this for right now. Plenty have assumed the only purpose for this not at all vaguely weapon-shaped structure was as a weapon. The handle of the hammer, the majority of the tail, was long, fused, and stiff and was connected to a highly mobile set of vertebrae on the dinosaur's ass that would have heaved the club from side to side with extreme prejudice and force. No mystery about it, right? A brand new study led by Victoria Arbor argues that ankylosaur tail clubs were the result of sexual selection and were mostly used for fighting within the same species. In the holotype specimen of Zul curivastator, they found pathological osteoderms, which are like armor plates. These plates are only on the sides of the hips, not all over the body, which is consistent with injuries caused by sideways tail swinging and ritualized combat. They were not able to find strong evidence that predation was a key factor in the development of the tail club. The sexual selection hypothesis is further supported by the fact that the size of the tail club changes a lot over evolutionary time and grows slowly. There is no doubt that the tail club could have been used for defense, but their findings suggest that sexual selection was the driving force behind the development of this powerful weapon. This changes the way most people think about ankylosaurs. It suggests that they had complex behaviors and probably fought ritualized battles for social dominance, like other Ornithischian dinosaurs and mammals. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman.